Hi, I'm Dr. John Baker. I'm a chiropractic doctor in Longview, Texas. Earlier today, I did a video about fibromyalgia, and I talked about the problems that some people have that their doctor doesn't believe it's a real clinical entity and treats them like they're a hypochondriac and the symptoms varying from person to person. This topic of this video is uh, myofascial pain syndrome also known as vinyl fasciitis, also called trigger point, there, uh, trigger point syndrome. And it, on the other hand, seems to be more of a recognized, taken seriously clinical entity. Although it involves a lot of the same structure and to some degree a lot of the same symptoms. Um, myofascial refers to the muscle myo, and fascia is the tough outer covering of the muscle. And, and myofascial pain syndrome often um, is a result of trauma, but what happens is the muscle, for example, let's say that you have a whiplash situation from a car wreck, the muscles go into spasm after the trauma, but they don't go out of spasm. They just stay tight and constricted and contracted. And what happens over time is that as that happens, your blood supply can get interfered with and you can start metabolizing glycogen, the muscle sugar, in the absence of sufficient oxygen to completely metabolize it, so you get a buildup of what's called lactic acid. And that's the substance that gives you the burn when you're doing a run or a strenuous workout. The lactic acid itself is an irritant to the muscles. So for example, let's say that the muscle is starting to be contracted, staying that way, it starts to building up lactic acid. You can get a what's called a focus of hyper irritability that uh, becomes what's called a trigger point. It's usually about a pea-sized focus of hyper irritability in the muscle. And it's fi it it's becomes fibrotic. So you have kind of a hard nodular feeling and if you press down, it'll refer pain to other body parts. That's where you get the word trigger point is that pressing on it or having pressure on it can trigger, literally, pain in another body part distant from where the actual trigger point is. Now a complication of having a trigger point is that you can have a primary trigger point that occurs say in the trapezius muscle or whatever and after a while it becomes weaker, it's not doing its job because it's not elongating and contracting like it's supposed to and it passes part or all of its job duties as a muscle the surrounding muscles who become overburdened and they develop their own trigger points. So you can have what's called a primary trigger point generating stellate or, or satellite trigger points. And those trigger points can refer into weird places so you can get a really confusing, bizarre pain distribution where you're getting pains in different body places and you wonder what's happening and why am I getting these. And the thing about it is that the trigger points, because to some extent they're a biochemical problem, but they're also a mechanical problem. And you know, if you go to your doctor and he doesn't take you seriously and notices you're depressed, which is not hard to, to acquire if you're hurting for more than six months, he might just give you an antidepressant and pass it off. Well, it's just, you know, you're making stuff up or you're becoming hyper vigilant with your body. And that's not going to fix a um, trigger point because you have to break up that vicious cycle of being contracted, being, being irritated, getting contracted even more, getting weaker, etc. So you can pay, take painkillers and muscle relaxants and you know, anti-inflammatories out the wazoo and it's still not correct the underlying problem. And it becomes really frustrating for folks if they have a doctor who doesn't know much about fibromyalgia or myofascial pain syndrome and just passes it off on oh, they're just getting old or whatever. Because after a while with a trigger point, that muscle is going to get weaker. And if you have stellate or, or satellite trigger points that also get weaker, you can start to developing an overall feeling of weakness and fatigue and, and then with pain more than six months, depression, clinical depression. And it can keep you from sleeping, so you wake up in the morning, maybe you feel not rested and you 
kind of walk through the day in a fog, can't think straight. So at some point, at some point, a trigger point, myofascial pain syndrome, uh, myofascial pain disorder, can start to generate symptoms much like what people report with fibromyalgia. Now, am I saying they're the same thing? No, not at all. But they can be comorbid, meaning they can exist together, and one can exacerbate the other, etc. And they can be misdiagnosed. I guess that was my point. Um, what kinds of therapy have been used for fibromy for myofascial pain syndrome? One of the ones that, that's least invasive is simple digital pressure on the trigger on the muscle that's spasmed up or in spasm that trying to get it to release. And often this does a world of good. It's not a one treatment fix because the muscle can get relaxed and then slowly start to contracting again. So you want to do this over multiple treatments to get a, a good outcome. Another is what's called trigger point injections. And that's where they do, they, they inject the substance directly into it, usually it's something to kind of numb the area out and to get some anti-inflammatories into the area. Um, you know, for some people this works really well. Some people have a, you know, a minimum good outcome from it. You know, it really varies from person to person. And then some doctors give anti-inflammatories and muscle relaxants. Um, I don't think that's a, the best approach, I would just say, because it's, it's not really going in and breaking up the vicious cycle in the, in the way that you need to do it. Um, so myofascial pain syndrome, uh, to some extent, it can have symptoms similar to fibromyalgia. Some people, you know, a chronic trigger point problem can become misdiagnosed as a fibromyalgia problem. And, but it's ultimately something that, that is serious. It can cause you to be in pain a lot. It can cause, uh, you know, depending on where the true point is, it can cause you to think you're having a stroke or a heart attack or whatever. And it can interfere with your life, make you feel miserable, and uh, be difficult to diagnose. So it's a, it's a condition that you definitely want to find someone who has had experience both in diagnosing and treating um, myofascial pain syndrome. And if you've had trauma like a car wreck, it's definitely something that you want your healthcare provider to look out for because that's one of the main etiologies of uh, myofascial pain syndrome is uh, trauma from a car wreck or from workers' comp event. Anything where you have trauma as the, the initiating factor. So I hope I've helped you with some information. I certainly haven't given you all the information in the world about it.